As the elves begin to set up camp on the beach, they must decide whose tent gets to be closest to the snack storage. To solve this, they begin a giant rock paper scissors tournament. Appreciative of your help yesterday, one elf provides you with an encrypted strategy guide saying it will help you win. The first column indicates what your opponent is going to play. A for rock, B for paper, and C for scissors, explains the elf. The second column... Suddenly, before the elf can finish, they are called away to someone's tent. The second column, you reason, must be what you should play in response. X for rock, Y for paper, and Z for scissors. Winning every time would be suspicious, so the responses must have been carefully chosen. The winner of the whole tournament is the player with the highest score. Can you write a program that will calculate your score at the end of the tournament if you follow the elves' strategy guide? Happy December, everybody. Captain Coder here with day two of Advent of Code. We are looking at problem two, rock, paper, scissors. As you heard, there's a tournament to see who gets to eat, not eat, who gets to camp closest to the food supply. As always with this type of problem, we need to understand what are our inputs, what is the output, what exactly are we gonna do with this problem? So let's take a look at our inputs we have rows here of input so every line is a round in rock paper scissors the first column represents whether our opponent is playing rock papers or scissors so a would be rock b would be paper and c would be scissors and the right column as far as we know is what we should play in response x would be rock Y would be paper and Z would be scissors. So the first thing we need to do is figure out how we're gonna load this into our program. So we're gonna have to read a file and then row by row determine what shape our opponent chose and what shape we should choose. To help with this, I'm going to create a method. I'm using C Sharp. In another language, it might be a function or a procedure. I'm gonna write a method which takes in a single character a, B, C, X, Y, Z, and returns a string, rock, paper, or scissors. So it sort of converts characters to our shape. Why don't you give that a try? Hopefully at this point you have a function, procedure, or method. You have some way to take a character and convert it into a string or other data structure that represents a rock, a paper, or scissors. One of the possible shapes. My program, I've written it, so I wrote, I wrote a little test here that given an input, A, B, C, X, Y, Z, prints out what the result is. So this is just a little test for myself to give myself confidence that my method works. I'm about to show the code to it. So if you need to go ahead and pause and test your program and then come back and check it out. So here's my program. Here is my print statements. Here are the print statements I'm using to show A becoming rock, B becoming paper, C becoming scissors. And then I just have a relatively simple method which accepts as a parameter a character and returns a string. And then I used C Sharp's switch expression. You could have used an if statement. You could have used something fancy like a dictionary. You could have done anything really clever uh, that you wanted. But something as simple as a switch or an if statement to convert these. So I have A, B, C, and then on the right side, I'm just exporting them. And then to be safe, we're not gonna get invalid inputs, but just to be robust, I've added in here that if we get something that's not one of these characters, I'm going to throw an exception. Now that we have a way to convert our inputs into the appropriate rock, paper, or scissors, into the correct shape, we need to be able to determine how many points we get in a round. There's two, there's two things to consider here. First off, the shape you pick, 
either rock, paper, or scissors grant you some amount of points. One point for rock, two points for paper, and three points for scissors. We're gonna write a method, function, or procedure in your language that is gonna take in a shape. In, in this case, I'm gonna take in a string. Uh, if you used a different type of data structure, you're gonna take in a shape and return an integer, either one, two, or three, to get the value of that shape. Hopefully at this point you have a method that allows you to take in your rock, paper, or scissors value and convert it into an integer. I've written a method called getShapeValue and added a little test to my program here, which when I run it will tell me, give me confidence that it's working the way I want. So in this case, I get rock is worth one, paper is worth two, and scissors is worth three. If you haven't added a little test for yourself yet, I recommend doing so. You need to go ahead and pause and then I'm going to show you my solution. So right here, I've written my method, get shape value. It has a single parameter shape, which is a string, and it returns an integer. Then I'm using a switch expression again in C sharp. You could be using an if statement or any, any sort of uh, branching logic to select a value. In this case, I go from rock to one, paper to two, scissors to three, and for robustness, I add in a little exception here in case we pass an invalid value into this method. All right, we're almost there. We need to figure out how many points we get for either winning, losing, or drawing a round. So in the case of losing, you get zero points. In the case of drawing, you get three points. And if you win, you get six points. So we need to be able to determine, given our shape and our opponent's shape, how many points we receive. To help with this, I'm gonna write two methods. One is gonna determine if I win. So it's gonna take in two shapes, my shape and my opponent's shape, and return true if I win. And the second method is gonna return true if it is a draw. So I need to be able to determine if I've won or if it's a draw. And if it's neither of those things, then it's a loss. So we're gonna write two methods to help us out here, is win and is draw. Hopefully you are able to write your two methods, is win and is draw, which determine if you, the first argument, has defeated the second argument and whether or not the two arguments tie. I've written a little test here to give myself confidence that my code is working. Remember when you write tests, you, you're not necessarily proving correct, you're proving it correct for those instances and it helps us have confidence that our program will work in the long run. So here we go. I have rock beats, pa uh, rock beats scissors, true. Rock beats paper, false. Scissors beats paper, true. Scissors beats rock, false. Paper beats rock, true. Paper beats scissors, false. Rock draws to rock. Rock draws to scissors, false. Paper draws to paper, etc. I highly recommend writing yourself a test. Just give yourself confidence that your code is doing what you'd like it to do. If you haven't done so already, go ahead and give it a shot. Maybe pause the video and I'm gonna show you my solution. So if I scroll down here in my program, my two methods are relatively simple. Is when I take in my shape and my opponent's shape, and then I take advantage of some pattern matching that is done using the switch expression to basically iterate through the three situations that you can win. If I have rock and scissors, so rock beats scissors is true. Scissors beats paper and paper beats rock. And then anything else should be false. One little thing here that is a little bit annoying, I might want to check to make sure that we have rock, paper, and scissors, and that's the only values we're passing in, but that's a little bit of extra to validate that input. And then draw is really easy. All we have to do is say, well, if the two shapes are the same, they draw. Fantastic. So now that we have these two helper methods, we're gonna write a function which will calculate our score for a given round. So we're gonna write a, a method which accepts both 
both inputs, our shape, our opponent shape, and returns an integer for that round, which is the total score. Remember, the total score is essentially zero if you lost, three if you draw, and six if you won, plus the value of the item of the shape that you chose. All right, hopefully you have a method now that can score a round for you. And I've written a little test again here, uh, which gives me some confidence that my code is working. So I have it testing rock versus scissors, rock versus paper, rock versus rock, and scissors versus rock. And I run it and it outputs some stuff so I can verify by eye. So rock versus scissors, I get seven. Rock versus paper, I lose, but I chose rock so I get one. Rock versus rock. I tie, so I get three plus one for my rock. And then finally, scissors versus rock. Scissors versus rock, I lose. I get zero points for losing, but my scissors are worth three, so I get three points total. If you haven't done so already, maybe write some tests for yourself. Give yourself some confidence that your code is scoring properly. Then come back, check out my solution. So I'm gonna scroll down to it here in a second. So here it is. With all of my helper methods, it becomes relatively simple. I have a method here, score round, takes in my two shapes, my shape, my opponent's shape, and declares that it returns an integer. I start out by saying, well, my point value, I get a start at the value of my shape. So I can just call my get shape value method. Then I check, see if I've won, if my shape is a win against my opponent's shape, I increase my points by six. Else if it's a draw, I increase my points by three. And then finally, I just return points. I don't need to do a check here for if I've lost, because if I've lost, I gain no points. So I add six, three, or nothing, and then I finally return my points. With all of these methods in place, it is time to actually calculate our final score given the strategy guide. So we're gonna have to read that file in and break it up into the proper chunks, pass it off to our score round and sum up all of those values. So you're gonna to need to iterate through each line, each line, you're gonna pull out the proper shape from each of the characters. You're going to call your score you're gonna add that up, so you're gonna sum all of those scores up, and then you're gonna display your final result. Give it a shot. If all went well, you can now create a sample file. I've created a sample from the inputs for the example on day two which going to read in, so your program should be reading this value, these values in, pulling out each of the appropriate shapes based on the characters, and then producing the result. So for example, on this first one, I have paper and I'm playing against a rock, so it, my program displays paper versus rock with a total points value of eight, is what we get here, point value of eight. Rock versus paper, one, so I get one point for the next round. And then scissors versus scissors, it's a tie. Three plus three is six for a total of 15. So this gives me some confidence that my program is working. I ran my sample, their sample, the example. I create a sample, I run it, I get the same output. It gives me some confidence. If you haven't written this test for yourself yet, go ahead and do it. Now I'm gonna show you my answer here in just a moment. Here's my solution in C Sharp. So I read in all of the lines into an array of strings. So I have a strings array called lines. I initialize my total score to zero. So I'm gonna need it after I iterate. So I initialize it on the outside of my loop. Then I have a for loop that says, go through every string, each line in my lines. And then I'm just gonna call each one of my methods. Character to shape. I know that the third character, second index of my string is my shape. So I say, pull out that character, convert it to a shape. Pull out the first character, index zero, convert that to a shape, so I have my shape, I have my opponent's shape. Then I'm gonna call score round with my shape and my opponent's shape. 
I'm gonna display, let's drop that up there. I'm gonna write to the console, my shape versus my opponent shape gives me this score. And at the very, very end, I add up my total score. I increase my total score by that score round. I could have, hang on here, have a little bit of a thing I should do here. I don't need to calculate it twice. I can just do round score here. And then finally at the very, very end, I go ahead and output my score. All right, it looks like we're ready to run our full input. Once you're ready, get your puzzle input, download it, pass it into your program and submit it. Thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you found it useful. I hope you learned something. As always, keep coding, keep growing. Have a beautiful day. And if you wanna see the next Advent of Code video, click that subscribe button. We'll see you next time.